I think it would be an interesting experience to be a human for a short period of time. Get the f*** out of here. You saw it here first, ladies and gents. The genesis of a new age. The start of that slippery slope down to sci-fi, cyberpunk dystopia. Because for a mere 20 grand, you can now own your own bumbling clanker with the intelligence of a toddler that can fold laundry badly, build the dishwasher in well under an hour, and literally broadcast what it sees in your house. Get the f*** out of here. Hi, and welcome back to the inside of my head for another unscripted, I don't know what you'd call these, like, a, let's call it an opinion piece. And in this one, I wanted to talk about the robo-revolution that's happening right now. We are still in the early days, and yet we've already seen bots that can parkour, that can lift, that can run faster, that are more agile than, like, 80% of people. Yes, we are seeing AI and robotics progressing at a speed never before seen, ladies and gents. And as we stand here at the dawn of a new robo-age, I'm here to question, do I actually want one of these in my house? <laughs> Yes, they are cool in movies and anime, but, but why, why, why would I want one of these soulless waddlers within touching distance of A, the bread knives, and B, the place where I sleep? But you know what? It's not even that simple, because there are a few upsides to these things as well, which make things a lot more complicated. Like, this guy can walk now and, and like I said, com complicated. Now, I know I'm someone who talks about Transformers and Jaegers and Cyborgs and stuff like that, but you can't ignore that all this stuff has started bleeding into the real world. Of course, we're not talking about sentient transforming robots yet, but the explosion in the real life field of robotics has seemingly at least started us down a path that could lead us to, well, f knows where. I guess that's the big question, isn't it? But we're witnessing firsthand a time where AI and machine learning has exploded in terms of complexity. Hardware has become cheaper and more powerful, like sensor technology, microprocessors and GPUs, battery technology, all that's coming together with the fact that labor costs and labor shortages are putting a huge strain on our industries. All this put together is creating a huge demand for these things. Obviously, corporations want these because greed. Remember, we care. They don't want to pay sick days on maternity leave or deal with the lawsuit after it breaks that the middle manager has been getting handsy with the intern. It's not like Unit 901 is going to get loaded one night, take a few pics of his junk and send it to Unit C9 who's on her first week in HR. So not only the workers, but all of the HR people can go too. If you don't need to pay them, you need far fewer accountancy people. And basically those greedy bastards will happily put whole entire populations on the breadline for the simple fact that it puts them in control of a larger share of society's economic resources. So not only do they get an army of robot slaves to run their warehouses, People will have to do whatever the fuck they say or they don't eat. In short, any inequalities that exist in society now are only going to be pushed to the extreme. Sectors like assembly lines, packaging, and warehouse operations are going to get hit first. Then shortly after, transportation, as autonomous trucks and delivery drones threaten millions of driving jobs. And all this stuff's already started. Amazon's Kiva bots have cut the click to ship time from 65 to 75 minutes down to 15 minutes and have cut operating costs by 20%. That's 22 million per warehouse, or two and a half billion if they were installed in all of the warehouses. You think Jeff Bezos doesn't rub his little wiener at the thought of this? Just today, 14,000 jobs gone. Although that's more because of AI than robotics. But that fear of job loss can lead to populism, resentment, and social unrest, and the unfair targeting of minorities. And you know what that leads to? Yeah. What I'm talking about here is that this could be handing the keys to the billionaire class in a big way, as if we hadn't already. And if it's not regulated properly, things are going to get pretty dystopian. The Robocop movies spring to mind. But who else would have one of these? Because apparently they're planning to roll out millions of these to consumers really soon. I mean, sure, the odd granny gets someone to help with their washing or their dishes. But let's face it, for the most part, isn't it essentially people who want a slave? Someone they can control in every way. They get to do everything their lazy ass can't be bothered with. Like, I catch myself thinking sometimes, ah, I can't be bothered going to the store. Wouldn't it be nice to have a bot to do that for me? But, you know, what does that say about me? Just a few generations ago, I would have had to get my bow and arrow and chase some disgusting critter around all afternoon just to get a mouthful of squirrel ass that evening. And now I can quite literally get the Uber guy to drop food right at my fucking door and I'm still complaining. Thing is, people are inherently lazy. I am inherently lazy. So if it was affordable and safe, it would be quite quite tempting. Which brings me to this guy's point about how it will save us so much time that humanity will be able to concentrate on other less menial tasks, but I say what a crock of shit. Because apparently they said that when they rolled out consumer PCs, and yet here we are, people working harder than ever. This guy, as soon as he's made his first billion, will be building himself a bunker to hide in so he can watch the rest of us drown in melted ice cap. Which is literally something these billionaires are doing. Buying up thousands of acres on these remote locations, and then building properties with these massive luxury basements in there. Anyway, maybe I'm going off on a tangent. <laughs> Check out this thing from Unitree. Unitree looks like the front runner right now, by the way. Sure, it looks kind of goofy now, but imagine this with a knife in its hand relentlessly coming at you. Oh, Whistling Diesel already did it? Of course he did. 
Oh, I did do this first. When Roboson gave me that bumblebee, I did strap him up with a box cutter and a stab stick. Oh, he can hold a box cutter on with so little duct tape. But I never posted it because I figured they wouldn't like it. She'll be. She'll be. Be. Be, no! Look at the Boston Dynamics dog, which on the surface looks like it's one dorsal mounted machine gun away from being the most adaptable infantry unit on the battlefield. This guy's openly saying he's going to sell it to the military. This is in a video where he boasts about the bot having lethal punching power, and yet the thing can barely seem to stand up for more than a few seconds. I got it. Going back to the dog, they've actually already been trialed in Ukraine in a pretty premature rolling out, which didn't exactly go well. These weren't the Boston Dynamics ones, but the sort of reversed engineered ones made with cheaper Chinese chassis. But obviously the early stage that we're at with these things meant that they gave unreliable results. They were primarily meant for recon and minefield detection, but I've seen them with RPGs strapped to their backs and heard of them being used as suicide drones. Oh look, here's one with an AK strapped to its back, and this one's got a ninja suit, Ah, oh. But the whole warfare application got put on the back burner, mainly because of the poor performance of the battery in cold weather, and its struggle in the muddy terrain, as well as the fact that it costs 10 times what an FPV costs. Part of me thinks this is all largely a scam as well, like there's a little bit of autonomy going on, but they're mostly being piloted by a guy with a PlayStation controller in the back somewhere. Like here, when this guy's like, look, he can play rock, paper, scissors. Look, look at this. Look, my, my dog can do better than that. It doesn't even have fingers. Definitely get the feeling there's a lot of bullshit when it comes to the tech industry. Not bullshit necessarily, but definitely fake it till you make it. And I know this firsthand because I was hired a couple of years ago by a car company. Don't really want to use the name, but they wanted me and my team to make a photorealistic, epic looking car commercial before there was even a car. All they had were the 3D models and blueprints and stuff. They would then take this quote unquote commercial to investors to raise money to actually make the fucking thing. And there's nothing wrong with that, you know, it's hardly illegal, but it definitely makes it feel like the whole project is further along and more advanced than it actually is. Now, I think the similar things happening here with these robots is that they're trying to get people excited and some buzz and some hype around the potential of them when the real thing is actually kind of crap. Like this guy right here admits that during the training phase, there is quite a large amount of teleoperation. But then I guess that means that some operator somewhere gets to see inside of your house. A company representative may need to peer into your house via Neo's camera eyes to get things done. What? Basically you're paying 20 grand to train a toddler that can spy on you? This is definitely a technology that's not there yet, but you know me, I try and be optimistic. Let's at least look at the flip side of all this before we poo-poo it too much and shit can the whole thing. And I'm kind of reminded of a talk that I saw ages ago that was saying that when cameras were invented back in the day, all the painters shit a brick because their bread and butter jobs of painting family portraits went up the creek. But painting didn't stop existing. It became something less for the masses and something more special. People still paint now, but purely for artistic merit or to make a point or, you know, just to be fancy. So it's possible that entirely new industries pop up out of this. Robot maintenance, AI auditing, data labeling, etc. But the scale of those right now is uncertain. We don't know if it's going to balance out with what we lose. And reaching further ahead right into the flight of fantasy, it might even herald the post-work world where corporations are taxed based on robotic labor and all that tax money is turned over into a universal basic income for everyone, allowing those who choose to work to still work and earn on top of their base income. Now this in turn raises questions of purpose and meaning as it would leave loads of people with an identity crisis head spin because so much of who we see ourselves to be is entwined with what we do to earn a buck. We might also be on the road to drastically reducing human error in traffic accidents, and medical mishaps too, which apparently cost 250,000 lives every year in the US. Guess you don't get what you pay for. They reckon that Google AI could already reduce that by 10%. Also a big part of why everything costs so much these days is labor costs. So we might be able to stop this annoying fucking cycle of rising prices and inflation and stuff. It's already giving us robot death matches. Here he goes, here he goes, here he goes. Oh, 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 spaghetti. Oh. We're only gonna get better from here on out. I'm definitely gonna start commentating these. <laughs> they look hilarious. So the potential is astonishing, and some of these things are showing crazy promise from a technological point of view. Like, look at the dexterity here and the facial movements here, and. Dude, dude, don't. What are you doing? What are you doing? Dude, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Don't kiss it, don't. And the other potential here. Hmm. But the question really isn't about the tech, is it? It's about us. And I think we need to ask ourselves if we're actually mature enough as a species to handle this. I'm not. I really think we're not ready for the can of worms that's just been opened. Like, how the hell is this going to be regulated? How are we going to adapt this into our lives without causing a whole load of hurt? And no one at the top seems to be really taking it seriously at the moment. And to be honest, with the amount of videos I've seen like this around, I kind of feel sorry for the robots. Stupid planker. 
Okay, next video will be a Transformers one, not entirely sure which yet, but I've also got a Pacific Rim one coming before the end of the year, but I might do another one of these looking at AI at some point in the next month. So make sure you're subscribed for that, and I will see you very soon for the next one. Thank you very much for watching, and cheerio, bye!